fail caddis pupa, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the organza rub for to form the body in this fly. Uh, quite a few guys have been asking me about the cysts since I tied another another pattern. And you can easily tie it in this style if you want it. Uh, and you can change the colour combinations. I'm just going to stick to the kind of normal colours so so you can see what I'm doing. Now obviously what you do is what I like to use anyway is a, a long pair of scissors just to cut along the edge. Maybe around for this fly you don't want the fibres to be too long. Around about say 2 mil from the edge. Obviously you get two full lengths from this. And uh, this is just a nice yellow. You can go a paler yellow or a cream, which is just ideal. And then once you cut it off, remove the fly from the vise. What I like to do is the very edge of the, the ribbon I catch on the vise. Then I get my dubbing needle and basically the running fibre that runs along the, the ribbon, remove. So you can form this fine hackle, which will give the a really nice body of the gills of the fly. Body and gills, it's a kind of mix of both. So there we are, that's it off. I'm ready for using. So the hook I'm here, I'm just using a barbless size 12 uh, grub shape hook. If you're barbed, you can use whatever hook you have, it's up to you, dial up to yourself. Uh, into the vise. Then I'm going to put some lead on the body. And what I like to do is start at the back. This is a lead tape. We wind it up until maybe short of the thorax, the length, full length of the thorax, and short at the back because you don't you don't want it. Uh, you want your body to taper up and then taper towards the eye. I'm encourage shape a wee bit more, start maybe a turn and a half up and again wind it to this point here just use the back of your nail to sort of flatten the, the lead and take away any any lumps now the thread again it's entirely what thread you want to use, I like the uni thread in this case this is a light keyhole, any O I'm just going to start at the eye now I'm going to put some eyes on at this point. Now for the eyes I'm going to use this heavy nylon, this is 12 pound nylon. It's just a say sea strike but it's a nice bright yellow. You get all these different colours in the sea angling and what I'm looking for is a length, maybe about 10 mil. And I've got a pair of pointed tweezers. I put these put the Island to a point where I want the width of the eyes to be around about a mil or so, just over a mil. So it's there, it's there. And then I'm going to melt these into the side of the the tweezers. Quite easy. Just let it run up to the, the tweezers on this side and on this side. Obviously give it a second or so and blow it. And this will cause them to to dry, then I move them to the tips of the tweezers and then catch them on the top with a couple of turns, well three turns in this case, let it go because what then you can do, you can move it around and you can see I'm slightly one size long on the other so you can move it to a point where you've got an even distance between each eye and as I see, you want it on the top and then figure it through it there we are just let that out just figure it through it, nice and tight until you're happy and then I'm going to start to work my way down now I'll lightly run the thread over the lead at first, just to catch it. You don't want to come in too tight because you'll cause it to sort of come away. Uh, when you're happy then you can start to come back up. Start to cover the lead up and form the shape of the body. 
Now, I've got nymph skin, that brown nymph skin, which I've cut. A different set of widths, I mean, you want. Just get a hold of it. Here we are. This is about 3mm wide. I'm going to cut it into a point. The dark brown's ideal, it's perfect for this, this card is pupa. And on the way down, I'm going to tie this in. I'm going to start it, catch it about here. Just lightly. And as you start to wind down, you can slightly stretch it as you get to the point where you want it to start. Which is about there. And get your ganza rib. Now, just bear some of the fibres at the bottom here so you can catch it on the side. Right next to the the nymph skin. And then wind up nice and tight. You can look at the body, see the shape that you're forming. To the point where you're around about to when you let the thread go, it should be in line with the point of the hook. Shouldn't be far wrong there. Now, what I like to do is a turn of the organza at the back, with the fibres towards the back. Bring it to the front. Do a turn over the brown nymph skin, keeping it on the back of the... You can sort of try and let you see that, so you can see it right on the back. You want it as straight as you can. You want to straighten up when you come back round. And then you want a turn. And then another turn over. Again, making sure it's on the, the top. Then come and pull it back. And then you want two turns. It's exactly the same way I do. The original one I use a wheel. So it's two turns. Bring this over. And that single turn. Now the organza ribbon is really strong so you, it will hold the fly really well. Always encouraging these fibres to go at the back. Now that's two turns there and that's into the third turn so we're increasing the distance between as we go up. Over it again. It's a wee bit fiddly but you can get, you get used to it. Once you have had two or three tied you get, you get it going. Three turns again. At this point I'm going to catch off tie in the organza. This will in line with the point of the hook. Probably the waist. Slightly tidy this up. Then we can bring this over the back. Catch it down with a turn of thread this time. Or two or three anyway. Then hold it back. Now I'm going to show you the type of body you get. You can see really nice, very natural looking type uh, body that you'll get. And all we have to do is then put some legs in. Now what, I, what I'm going to do is fold it back here and then come over it slightly to the point where I want it to start. Now at the same time I'm just going to start forming a taper with the thread. Just check where we are. You can see where we are now. Ready for our legs. Now the legs are just a brown partridge feather dyed yellow. This one here. And you could wind it on but I'm not. I'm just going to basically cut the point of the, the hackle out. Pull these fibres back so you've got an even split of fibres either side. Just take the tip out, pinch it away or cut it away, it's entirely up to yourself. And there we are, we've got a nice V. And then we can set this on the top, catching in the fibres down either side. So we just come in for the top, put a finger and thumb on the, the fibres. The length of the fibres should be around about the length of the, just slightly less than the body or, or close. Don't want them underneath, just slightly on the side. Very quickly. We can encourage them to stay where we want, or sit where we want by using our nail. If we're happy, then we can tidy this area up. Do 
Go with the best. There we go. Just keeping everything nice and neat. For the body, I'm just going to use a dark brown dubbin. It could be seals fur, it could be something that's a wee bit coarse. This is an adult seals fur, which is a wee bit coarse. Uh, the fibres are slightly thicker. Uh, but you can use, it could be a life cycle dubbin or natural dubbin, whatever. Make sure you get a good turn at the top here. Uh, if you need to go back up, just go back and forward to get the shape. Shape that you want. Right to the this side of the eyes. Now take your thread in front. And we tie in some horns. Now the horns are this this is bronze mallard, two fibres. You can put on whatever type of fibre you want, so tie it up to yourself. So they're lined up. Gonna be obviously longer than the the nymph itself, maybe one and a half the hook length. Just tie them on the top. Catch them on the top there, and then all I do then is just fold back these fibres. Nice and tight. Two waist ends, just basically break these away or cut them away it's entirely up to yourself. Obviously keep the thread tight. Now what you want to do is keep them apart, separate them, so that you can bring the thorax cover over. And I'm going to do that at this point. Now as well I'd like to bring some of the, the fur down either side. Just watch your thread. It's okay. As I say now, bring the brown nymph skin over the top, right to the eye. Have a wee stretch. A couple of turns or so. Now, what I like to do is change the colour of the thread. I'm using a sharpie pen here in brown, the same colour as the, the dubbin. Just run it. Bring the thread. We tie in some more of the dubbin. You don't need a lot. You could even use a finer dubbin so you don't overdo the head a wee bit, but this is still okay. For this size, obviously the smaller the flies you go, the finer the dubbin you need to go. Come in here, have a nice head. Bring it to the back. Take away the excess. Now, just a wee quick check, it's okay. Then we can bring this over, come in with a turn, see how it's sitting, looks okay. And then the easiest thing to do is to either use a varnish, or in this case I'm using some super glue onto the thread, and then wet finish. One, two, three, it's plenty. Dry instantly, trim away your thread, and then cut this round about maybe a mil, mil and a half or so from the area you've tied it off. There you go. Quite a simple fly. Once you've tied a few, it's quite easy. Get a nice shape. And you can see the body you get with the organza. It's certainly worth a go tying all different types of pupa. Uh, I would say it's certainly a material. It's very cheap. You can buy it in large spools. I mean, this is 50 yards on this spool. And uh, you can see it's a, a yellow. The guns are having 10 mil is the one that I was using. And then just encourage these horns to lay on the side. There we go. Rough, you want it quite rough. Once this is in the water, you get a lovely shape. Lovely profile of the nymph and that's what the fish are looking for and obviously the colour.